Today, Americans are drowning in overly debated issues such as immigration, Medicare, terrorism, leaked emails. Although these are important topics, the issue that will affect the most Americans is the issue of the 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. No, not that 1%, this 1%, the shining blue jewel of the United States, the Great Lakes. Truly one of the unique resources in the world. It's the largest freshwater resource in the world. There's nothing like it. And every one of us have a responsibility to do what we can to protect those waters. Really in the U.S., we are very lucky. We have the best drinking water in the world. And in a way, I think that that's allowed us to become a bit complacent. Um, about our drinking water, we take it for granted. About 70% of our fresh water is, is right here. Put it at the scale and help visualizing just how significant the Great Lakes are, here is a graphic of 100 water bottles, representing 100% of the Earth's entire surface. 71% of the entire Earth is covered in water. Of all that water, only 3% of it is fresh. Of that 3% of fresh water, two-thirds of it is trapped in ice in glaciers. That means 1% of all the water on Earth is fresh and accessible. Fresh water will be the great battleground of the future. It's not going to be a war over oil or over fuel or energy. It's incredibly important that we do protect uh, the Great Lakes, it being you know, in my opinion, in the opinion of Clean Water Action, really the most precious natural resource we have not only in Michigan but in the country uh, and arguably uh, worldwide. Besides the Great Lakes being such a treasured resource, it still faces many threats and complications. On the coast of Lake Huron, construction of a nuclear waste dump is underway. Located less than a mile from the water, 200,000 cubic meters of nuclear waste is being buried in porous limestone. That's right next to the most important freshwater ecosystem in the world. The notion that we are going to we are going to store nuclear waste anywhere near the Great Lakes it just makes like a sense. That's a fact. Water moves and water moves downhill. And and so ideally anything you bury underground you're going to keep away from water. We haven't been successful with storing nuclear waste um, in this country. We 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 you know, we haven't done it yet. We don't know how how well we can do at this wanting to put this repository right next to 70% of the world's fresh water, that, no, that's, that is cause for concern, and I would like to see a lot more dialogue on it. The Great Lakes are a huge uh, portion of the world's fresh water supply, so anything that could potentially contaminate those waters is something we need to be paying attention to um, and really thinking about long and hard before we move forward with doing something like that. There are not nearly enough politicians in the state of Michigan right now that put their money where their mouth is when it comes to protecting the environment. They'll pull it out on the stump, um, say, oh, we need to protect our Great Lakes. Uh, but if you check their voting records, you know, more than half of our uh, state house and state senate right now have 0% voting records when it comes to the environment. It's a very tragic example of what happens when you don't have a government that is very, very active in protecting its people. Protection. The people of Flint, Michigan needed protection. Instead, they were poisoned and their children were affected. The common public began to catch on to the atrocities occurring in Flint, but almost an entire year after the incident occurred. Since the filming of this documentary began, we have been following the water contamination situation in Flint, Michigan, where it has now exploded onto the national scene. It has received coverage from multiple news sources and even emergency action from President Barack Obama. We still don't have drinkable water in the city of Flint. Up to 10,000 children have been poisoned with lead, all because the state of Michigan decided that it was less expensive to use untreated Flint River water rather than uh, river or water from the uh, Great Lakes. We used to make jokes about like the things you would find there, like you would dump a dead body in the Flint River. It sounds terrible, but that's the reputation it has. They decided to hook Flint back up to the good water, but only pay for half the hookup. That said it all to me. To solve that immediate problem of, of reconnecting to Detroit water, because they disconnected from the Detroit water, and, and, and because of the chemicals they used to purify the Flint River water, it really caused a ton of problems with their old lead piping. The water was terrific right at the treatment plant. But the minute you put it in those old pipes, those chemicals were drawing that, that lead right out of the pipe. A person made a very short-sighted decision, supposedly to save money, to disconnect from the world's best water source, the Great Lakes, to go to the Flint River 
uh, which even General Motors uh, stopped using because it was corroding their auto parts. I mean, they, they're, they caused the damage, will only pay for half of the reconnection. The, the scariest part is the level of irreversible damage because it's not just, oh, well, we'll send a doctor and it's fine, you know what I mean? So now it's, well, the damage has been done, what do we do? Drinkable water here in the United States is not something that, um, you know, Americans shouldn't uh, not have access to that. So that's of great concern to us. Um, there's going to be devastating long-term impacts uh, for children that have been exposed to lead in the Flint area. People don't really pay attention to the issues until uh, the very last moment when they're forced to make a decision because they trust the people that they elect and hopefully they can. People of Flint were relying on their government and it let them down, it failed them. They're actively trying to make people know less when it's the opposite where people should know everything. The scarcity of fresh water in the world is a vital situation that needs to be addressed. It is an enormous situation that is seldom mentioned amongst politicians. The United States cannot afford to have the Great Lakes poisoned as the water was in Flint, Michigan. Let's not forget that over 60% of the human body is composed of water. That puts the responsibility on each and every one of us to protect our fresh water resources. It's easier to ignore things, you know, but then the second people start being loud about it, which is how you get things done, now it's on the national news, now there's protests. It's not a superhero movie, and it's up to people to do something. As all Americans, Rather, as all humans consume water, the issue of fresh water demands the input and attention of our presidential candidates. Water is essential for the endurance of America and the world.